Welcome to Double D's in the Morning, 97.1. We are here on a wonderful Friday morning. Friday the 13th, actually, as this episode will be airing. So, I hope you don't have any black cats passing your way or walked under any ladders to join us on this podcast today. Because if you do, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect the radio host to say that. FCC regulations be damned. Say whatever the fuck we want on the show. This is the an internet bitch. That's gonna be a bunch of censor beeps right there. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a lot, actually. <laughs> Welcome to the Double D Experience, guys. Guess Before we even back, start, back, back again. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Dennis is back. I couldn't I mean, even to, say that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to you guys, he never left because we recorded that, a bunch of episodes yeah. in advance. Dennis has been gone, vacant from my life for, for the weeks. last two weeks. And I've had some real shit going down in my personal and professional life for the last two weeks. So if there was any time that I needed my Korea man in my presence, it was uh, it, it was, was now. now. And instead, you know who needed the, his Korea man more? Korea. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. even born there, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been summoned back. <laughs> Today's episode is going to be a little bit more of like an, an, uh, an interview style episode. I'm going to be interviewing mm. Dennis today about um, his time in Korea. Uh, I know Dennis never went anywhere for you guys, but he's been gone from my life for the last couple of weeks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we actually recorded some episodes in advance. So he's been in Korea and also visited Japan this entire time. So this is going to be a different style, sort of a different style of episode today. Or it was a different style of episode today, depending on where I put this, if I'm being honest. Because, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys have given us a lot of love these last couple of weeks. Like, I thought the Snow White episode only did well because it was shorter and we were venting about something that's people, it's popular to vent about. Like it was Rachel an hour Zegler. and ten. No, 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 that one was 37, but then, uh, then, oh, this one was, yeah. Then the last week, you know, we talked, we just had a classic DDE-style Talk About Nothing episode. You guys gave that one even more love than, uh, the, uh, Snow White episode, so we hope you guys will still enjoy, like, our, in our interview informational-style mm -hmm. videos as well, because, you know, we like to be sometimes funny and sometimes serious on this show, yeah. so, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, it's like... <laughs> If I ever wanted to, like, get citizenship there, like, I think I would be exempt from their, uh, their compulsory military uh, service. I think it's, I think it's mandatory, actually. Yeah, it's mandatory man military service. Because um, well, you they, weren't born there. Yeah, exactly. I would be exempt. But then they would still be saying something, because it's like... I, I don't know, like, they take a, they take a lot of that shit person, like, a lot of they'd, they'd probably that be stuff, like, seriously. Shit. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, like, you know... Fuck you. Like, like you, being exempt for this, you know? You get... Korean citizenship, but you're exempt from the mandatory military service that every basically able-bodied male has to do. Not even celebrities are exempt from that a lot of times. And like mm -hmm. they gotta go as well. And like you over here, like BTS did, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. One of their uh one of their members actually, uh he uh yeah, he went to the military. Yeah. So Okay. Well Yeah, even they're not exempt. But I would get shit for it, I think. Yeah, like because it's like, you know, oh like Who's this a, like? Who's this like fucking um, like foreigner coming around here and like you know he's saying that like oh he's I am Korean by blood but technically on paper I'm an American mm -hmm. so there's like that whole discrepancy over there like that they love to point out to you all the time that you're not technically like even for Koreans that are born in the states they like to point out that oh you're not technically Korean because <laughs> you weren't born here and it's the reason why that like I now I know why. That my parents like left or at least in the sense that my dad left because there is a lot of things that culturally that my dad does that is like just typically korean but he is an american by heart mm. and why don't you um why don't you tell me about that he there's a lot of cultural like sort of lines you don't cross in korea and it all kind of stems from like the sort of Confucianistic sort of society that it kind of uh, that it kind of is. A lot of uh, respect your parents, you know, uh, honor your family, like stuff like that. Don't disrespect them. Like respect your elders. Like that's like obviously one of the bigger ones. And um, my dad, I, I gotta say, I think my dad definitely has like that dog in him for sure. I could tell that my dad, like, he probably got into fights when he was younger. Like, he was a real scrapper among his, like, uh, his other brothers as well. Because uh, my dad came from a pretty big family. Um, one of uh, his siblings is not with us here in the States. He's actually back in Korea. 
I have not met him personally in a long time. I think I might have when I was very young. But when uh, when my dad uh, came here, um, there was... Oh, no, actually, well, let me fast forward a bit. There was an exchange that my dad had with a uh, with an older gentleman who was also Korean. And it was around the time when I was shopping around for a new car. So my dad was helping me out with that a bit. And we went to this one Toyota dealership that was uh, somewhere, I think, in Englewood Cliffs. And he talked to this uh, kind of older dude. He was like, already got silver hair and everything. And my dad, usually when he speaks with us, like he, like he does speak English, but like we still kind of have like that sort of respect in our voice for like, for, uh, for our dad, like me and my, uh, mm-hmm. me and my siblings. And, you know, like, whenever, like, you ever hear, like, any Asian languages, like, there is that bit of tonal difference that kind of happens when, and also some words may be changed when you're talking to someone that's a bit older than you, it's supposed to kind of show respect and all of that. And my dad, uh, he also switched his, uh, he spoke Korean, but he spoke it in a very sort of, like, formal way to this older gentleman and... I think after we left, like we didn't find it. We didn't basically find what I was looking for. So we left and we got in the car and I think me and my dad were talking a bit. And then eventually something came up where he basically said, like, I hate talking to other Koreans. Or like he said, he like, I hate talking to other like <laughs> older Koreans because he has to revert back to like this whole like, I'm younger than you. So I have to talk to you differently bullshit. And I think my dad is far more comfortable talking to i think like just other people like in general because he never has to do that period Mm. and i think one can argue maybe my dad just had like just hated authority like flat out when he was younger and like he just hated doing it flat out but i think it's only more so that the whole you have to respect your elders thing is very much like You have to do it because it's the way we do things. And it's not earned that respect at all. It's Mm. just you have to be like that because it's the way it is. And coming from, I guess, more of a Western upbringing, uh, just because like I went to American school for like all my life and that's all I kind of knew and like Western sort of like kind of behaviors and stuff like that was more so what I grew up with and culture, I suppose. Like hearing that, oh, I have to speak to you in a more defer like in a more like deferential sort of way or like i guess a more respectful sort of way is this better better way to put it because like you are older than me even though i don't know nothing about you i don't know what you've done i don't know you like i just don't know you period and like for at least you know westerners like we your respect like our respect for you is earned like you get that treatment or you get that sort of like kind of preferential treatment if we if you earned it right if like you know uh if we've known you long enough at the very least right but you know for my dad like thing i could tell like he really he detested it like every single minute of it that he had to speak in that tone with him and like i think to even a certain extent my dad even doesn't like dealing with other koreans like flat out like mm. it's just like the way they do business and such is very much not him and my dad at the very least like from what i've heard and from what i've seen he's a very straightforward uh person when it comes to business he he just wants the transaction done he doesn't want a whole song and dance he'd rather just have it done and then that's it and like he doesn't like even sort of um play around or like do a whole song and dance when it let's say comes to price and such he's very much like look i want it for this much or i'll give it to you for this much and then that's it and then i've heard from uh my dad that this is just from him but i never i never really got to meet a lot of the people that he does business with but like a lot of the times he tells me like they really like him because of that very reason he doesn't fucking like you know, yank their chain or anything uh, when it comes to like, you know, doing business. It's just, look, is this and this? I want it like this. You can handle that. That's it. 
and it's just so straightforward and like just cookie cutter that they really like him for it and i guess now <laughs> going from my dad and going to let's say my experiences in korea and for any one of you who is planning on going to asia period um for vacation or even school or whatever if you're gonna go to korea first things first you got to learn korean because this is uh, this i'm gonna be bringing it back to another thing when uh when i talk about when i went to japan now a language barrier sucks a lot it sucks a fat one it really does and you're gonna have to uh let's say at least know some certain words to at least at the very least order food at a restaurant and koreans especially um i think they definitely have a much more a bigger appreciation when it comes to foreigners who come in knowing already some korean because it shows like it's a bit of like a respect sort of thing and like they really adore it too that like foreigners who let's say like a black guy or even a white girl anybody who comes into their store and they speak like let's say not even like fluent korean but at the very least can say a couple of words they really love that and they really appreciate that um you're gonna also notice that uh at least when i was there i got a lot of looks at me from a lot of older people it was mostly older people not like not really too much like younger folks uh, about my age or younger a lot of times like just because it all stems from i think just that older people just tend to like not stare so to speak but like just kind of look and sometimes they just kind of like lock eyes with you for like a few seconds too long and then i've had times where like i've caught like eyes with an older person like looking at me and i just looked away and i know some people who they told me when they had that happen to them they stared right back and they locked eyes and like they basically had like a stare down to see like who's gonna drop first and i think it, well, the expectation that's called a shell and showdown <laughs> well no that's when you touch the same object yeah, yeah and then you just yeah, like stare and like and you just like yeah, but like imagine though, it's just like with your eyes, just, just looking at each other, longingly. Just <laughs> be mad funny if you like just saw like an old man like looking at you and just kind of like. <laughs> Is the milf and the dilf culture the same? <laughs> <laughs> I would no, hope no. not. I have but, uh, I have real questions. Don't don't yes. um don't worry. Yes, but uh, yeah, like I think. Honestly, you're going to have to pick up the language if you're going to go to Asia. You're going to have to learn some fucking words. It's just the way it is. I would imagine that as far as languages go, like Korea is not the first one that comes to mind where I think that a big chunk of their population would be bilingual. It, it wouldn't. It's not like Europe, you know where I mean? Where Europe, mm -hmm. Europe teaches English like pretty, like pretty like, uh, yeah. what's the word I'm thinking for? Like methodically or like... Mm -hmm. Or it's like part of the curriculum. Medistically. You learn, it, yeah, you learn in like English, their language, and then plus two others. Yeah, two it's realities. like the same thing as like us learning Spanish in grade school, like for us, except, you know, you they're not fucking stupid. <laughs> so like, it's not, or it's not, and you know, because like Spanish classes, it's different. Like you're just, a lot of it is memorizing a script, whereas for Europe, I feel like they ingrain that at a much younger age. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the Asian countries go, really, I mean, that is the clear opposite side of the planet. You know what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit different over there. So beyond you even saying like, you know, because I, I think it's a universal thing that if you go to a country and you're speaking their language and like you you get in a Uber or you get in a taxi mm -hmm. and you say where you want to go in their language and they're pleasantly surprised that this fucking white dude just did that. And mm -hmm. uh, same thing when you go to a restaurant and order it and whatnot. It's the last thing, you know, I guess that any like kind of country would uh, want to struggle with, I, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. And I guess I'll ask you right now what the nature of that country is, but how, what would you rate Korea on like the Asia xenophobic scale? Oh, like if, the xenophobic you, scale. Um, no, because I'm saying if you okay. mess up some Korean mm. or if you mess up some little cultural things or whatever, like how angry would like the average one get at you as far as like cultural differences go? Because one interesting thing about Japan 
is that I feel like Japan is, like, even, like, a more cracked out, like, pseudo-hyper-capitalist version of America, if you would, in terms of a lot of ways. Not only just their worker culture, culture. And their, co- their worker culture and their business culture, their incel problem, which is way worse than it is in America, believe it mm-hmm. or not. Like, they're young people are just not fucking, like, it's an actual, like, serious problem over there. Yeah. Like, their birth rates are crazy. Which is whatever, considering global populations or whatever, but, like, the young people also just aren't hooking up. Like, they got dudes mm-hmm. marrying Game Boy cartridges over there. Seriously, look that up, that <laughs> happened. <laughs> And I know Little Korea, figurines too. Sheesh. And I know Korea is not like that, in at no. least that far. But as far as like sort of like you know the that xenophobic stereotype, mm-hmm. what would what would you say is like what would you say is like the cultural scale of that? Like, would they like really freak out if you say something in Korea wrong at a rest at a restaurant to order something, or would they just be like, oh, you know, like you're foreign, you messed up once, it's fine, whatever, like. Culturally, like, what is that scale of how they treat foreigners? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let me see. If I had to pick, um, it would definitely probably be like a 7 to 8 out of 10. Not so much that, like, in terms of, let's say, you saying something wrong, they're not going to give you really shit for it. They'll just kind of look at you and just go, huh? <laughs> As if, like, as Korea is a... Korean itself, the language, is a very, like... It's a very easier language to kind of master. Or maybe, you know, an easier language to kind of learn. Kind of hard to master if, like, you're just coming from it from, like, let's say, a completely different sort of language. Because it is a phonetic language. All the symbols and everything have, like, you know, a specific sound that I make. Like, they don't have, like, kanjis and shit. We have one. We have it's, one out. It's it's more so the Chinese way where like, you know, like there's some certain phonetic things that like the the meaning changes based on the pitch. Could is that, sometimes, is that a thing? yeah. Because I, I know that's what not, Mandarin is like. It's not as like um stringent as Mandarin and uh, Cantonese is where like the tone or like the difference of tone could have an entirely different meaning, like right. vocabularily speaking. But for us, tone is just very much to kind of convey tone. Like, if you say, let's say, hello, in like a sort of like pissed off sort of way, like they'll know exactly like kind of what you're getting across. Whereas if you just kind of like say like, oh, hello, like, you know, in a more kinder sort of tone, they'll be like, you know, like it'll uh, obviously convey like what you needed to, uh, to convey. And like for at least the xenophobia in Korea, it's not as strong as I thought it would be because there, there is a bigger sort of open arms that they have with foreigners than they do in other countries. Like Japan is not anti foreigner, but they don't, really care for them nor do they really particularly want them there if anything they're not really like saying you know oh please come to japan like it's not really like that over there it's korea has a lot more at least from what i've seen and heard they have a lot more programs over there that actually encourages foreigners to go over there to like teach in their schools and like work in their uh, companies that have like, you know, uh, like, let's say foreign divisions that like, you know, they could like kind of uh, use other people from like mostly America, but like other countries do come around there too to like kind of work there as well. Um, I this was in Korea, but when I was in uh, Japan, um, they had, uh, <laughs> I'm not even joking guys, but when I'm about to say this, they had Indians working at their 7-Elevens and like they spoke flat out like really good Japanese too. So like they picked it up like really quick oh, uh, at the very one. least, like, I guess they had to pick it up, but like, it was still crazy to see where guys who, you know, no disrespect, who talk like this spoke fluent Japanese, like uh, right, like across the board. You want to know one of the most difficult things for a voice actor to do? An Indian accent? <laughs> no. It's to do an impression of a character doing an impression of another character. 
It's when you're voicing oh. like Bugs Bunny doing an impression of Daffy Duck mm -hmm. or whatever. One thing Mel Blanc did effortlessly, and the first thing that came to my mind as a culture shock sheltered American boy was that can I possibly speak in Japanese in an Indian accent? And that's what about where my brain went with when you said you literally they have Indians working at the Seven Elevens there, and mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about an Indian. With an Indian accent speaking Japanese. I, but that that's is the something, thing. He did I, not I have an accent I, a lot of oh, times. These oh, guys did he, not have accents. Oh, like, it was not like, you know, oh, hey, oh, like, I can't even do it, though. Like, that's, that's what, the thing. That, like, dude, trying that's to speak saying. Japanese with an Indian accent. That's like, what I just I'm can't fucking do it, saying. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how difficult would that be, like, for us, like, as Americans to even think, like, what the fuck does that sound like? That's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so you true. Know? Oh, man. But yeah, to, it was um, a bit of a culture shock when I went, like, not, not, I guess, like, culture shock, because it's like, I wasn't, ex like, it's not like I wasn't expecting, like, no foreigners at all, like, in Japan, but, like, you know, I remember hearing from a couple others that, like, oh, yeah, there's, like, there's still some Indians over there, like, there, there's, like, Indians over there, like, actually working the 7-Elevens, and, like, I didn't think that I would see it, because at the place that we went to, it didn't look like they got any other foreigners except Koreans. Like, I, I, I would be perfectly honest with you when i was at fukuoka that's where i went not tokyo guys when i went to fukuoka like there was more korean that i heard than i expected like a lot more but it made sense because that apparently i heard is like the go-to like sort of vacation spot for a lot of koreans um uh like during their breaks and stuff so like i guess you know it made sense but um i guess going back to like i guess the xenophobia in korea it's a lot less it's a definitely a lot less than it is in uh in japan i and, figured mm. that that was going to be the answer for you to be completely mm. honest because one thing that i very much know about uh korea something that gets told is because of how huge korean barbecue korean barbecue jesus <laughs> i mean it is huge of, it is it is but because of how the reason i blurred my lines is because i was going to say k-pop because of how mm -hmm. huge K-pop is here. I remember when I worked at the American Dream Mall. And um, I had two friends. They were both girls who were both very much opposites. But they were both huge into K-pop and like BTS together. Do you, mm -hmm. remember the, do you remember the Russian girl that I would always tell you about? Yeah, yeah. There was this one video of like one of their K-pop members dancing. And he had like a boner while he was dancing. And like... And then she fucking was watching him dance. And like... It's a huge culture thing in America actually. I never understood K-pop... I guess as a, mm. again, like, you know, a sheltered uh, a Cuban-American man. And uh, it's weird how, like, insanely popular they are here. I would say that BTS is one of, if not the biggest music groups in the world. And the reason I'm bringing them yeah. up is because we were talking about the capitalistic nature of, like, some Asian countries and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Japan being that basically cracked-out version of America where it kind of has a lot of problems that America has, just worse. If I'm keeping it a stack, if I'm just keeping it a solid stack from their incel problem, like their yep. work, workaholic culture, how climate change is affecting their country, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so the reason I'm bringing that over to Korea again is because this Russian girl, a Russian girl mm -hmm. who spoke Spanish, was watching <laughs> okay. this Asian man with a boner dance. Mm -hmm. And as she's, we're, I'm standing in between them as they're showing me that video. And then I just suddenly feel from the bottom of my thigh grazing all the way up between my legs. She was rubbing the my, the back of my inner thigh because she was getting horny watching this fucking dude. Because oh no, she she touched me all the time. Like she like me me and her like fucking we we did some things. Like I choked her. Yeah, with yeah, my, but it's I, just like, like you know I, I I'm getting horny with, um, in front of my friend and like rubbing oh, his yeah, thigh another, right now in front of another person too. Like you know like I like I mean me and her did some stuff together. Like I choked her with my scarf. Like she asked me to do that to her once, and um, no, she was fucking kinky. And uh, reason I'm bringing all <laughs> we're gonna bring in all reason I'm bringing this up is again I'm not trying to echo last week's sentiments from last week's episode. Be like look what I've done with women before. I'm bringing it up because she did all of that being the very free handsy oh like very flirty person she was because of this video of this asian pop star dancing in that mm -hmm. way that's how huge bts is here and i think as far as globalization goes you know korea is starting to like echo some sentiments of japan in that sense because we have mm -hmm. they got mario they have all these like amazing japanese figures anime where, like, and their general. car and yeah. obviously their cars Mm -hmm. You know, which where the Japanese came in and be like, our cars are so much fucking better than yours. Watch, mm -hmm. and uh, where that and it's tobacco, true, <laughs> yeah. Well, that whole tobacco came around back then and actually legitimately threatened American cars for a while. And uh, 
Yeah. Make better cars than America? Fuck. Yeah, like, that is not the power of German engineering. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Or General Motors. <laughs> or General Motors. So, the reason I bring that up is because, like, how much further, Dennis, do you think Korea is getting closer to that pseudo-capitalistic extremism, if you would? Not extremism, mm -hmm. that's not a good word to describe it, but, like insane workaholic business model because one thing i know about people like bts <laughs> and all their pop stars really not exempt from like serving in the military as they are one to do over in korea they <laughs> are neighboring a very hostile nation well um, they don't really take seriously anyone that's the thing <laughs> as you know they really don't deserve we get, to be like, honest. they they you know what they say a lot of times like we get threats from north korea every month we're just like yo just do it already <laughs> just do it you fucking pussies like they because like they always they always threaten every fucking month that we're going to wipe you off the planet. And we're over here with the American army right behind us. It's like, you know, like that one scene in Breaking Bad when Gus gets like fired upon by like the sniper. There's yeah. his hand out like, it's like, it was like that. Like, we're going to just do it. What are you going to do? Yo, here's the gun. Here's the doctor's note. <laughs> uh, not the same sentiment, but whatever. Their pop stars I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah. have to serve in the military. Mm-hmm. They are not allowed to date. They're not allowed to have girlfriends, from what I have been told. I, is that true? A and I believe I've been told that because apparently a big part of what, you know, the whole thing is with those boy bands is that it protrudes oh, the, group, the, like the boy band groups are not allowed to have girlfriends. Yes, because it protrudes the illusion that, like, you know, they're for me, like for their young fans and whatnot. That is mm. what I have been told by some of the most diehard, like, K-pop fans in the world. Granted, none of those K-pop fans were Korean. They were these American girls of both Latin okay. and Russian descent and whatnot. That they're not allowed to literally have girlfriends because it ruins the illusion for, like, all the girls who love them. Let me put a correction to that. Let me Wait. answer your question with a little bit of a correction. It's not that they're not allowed to date. It's more so that it's almost heavily suggested not to. Because of two reasons. First of all, fans be retarded. Oh, K-pop K -pop fans are insane. Like, they, they, legitimately. They're, they're they will rabid psychos. dox you. Yeah. And when they hear that, let's if say... If you don't like Jungkook. <laughs> if they hear that Jungkook like, thing is has a girlfriend... Like, this is just primarily their reaction <laughs> if they hear it. If they hear Jungyuk has a fucking girlfriend, they hate her and their d hatred, which reaches a level that I did not think was possible sometimes, but they go crazy, man. They'll, like, say, like, who this fucking bitch? Like, they'll, like, like, they'll post it all around, like, every bit of social media out there, and, like, they'll just be like, who the fuck is this bitch? Who thinks she's good enough to date our Jungyuk or whatever the fuck? There's this sort of parasocial relationship that happens when, um when it comes to K-pop uh, groups and then their fans. Funny enough, the I didn't see, I don't see this too much for when parts of a girl group, like some, some of the girls in a girl group get like a boyfriend. I don't really see that too much. I, maybe that has happened. I'm not too sure. But most of the time, the one that I hear about the most is usually when a guy in a guy group gets a girlfriend. Yeah. And the girls go fucking psycho. And say like you know some wild shit like I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna kill this bitch how dare she like you know date such and such of my group Ugh. I mean like, I saw the I saw the video of that guy dancing with the boner like he was pretty he was he he was he was kind of packing <laughs> like I can't, <laughs> I can't even lie he was I was like but, even she showed me the video I was like oh shit what the fuck I was like oh yeah he's got he's uh, he's not a baby arm but he's got something like he was like <laughs> bouncing around too like he was wearing sweatpants <laughs> like whoo. My God, so, the confidence. <laughs> so at the very least, I guess what I'm getting at is, is that um, when it comes to that specifically, like their relationship is, is that like he's ours, you know, like the relationship is, is that we love you, but you belong to us in a very subtle sort of way. It's not exactly like clearly seen, but that's the sort of relationship they have with their fans. It's that, yeah, like, we can't do nothing, essentially. Like, not gonna go that far, but, like, it's more so that, like, you know, you, like, we love you, and you have to respect us, the fans, right? And 
to a certain extent, there is also on the other extreme side of the spectrum where American celebrities and pop stars could give a fuck about what their fans think. They really could give a fuck. They don't care. They do not give a fuck at all. Like, you can go off on Twitter all you want. They'll be laughing all the way to the bank and they will not give a shit. But the relationship, in, at least in East Asia or at least in Korea, is far more different. Yeah, and we literally have, like, late night show segments where celebrities read mean tweets. Yeah. And they laugh about it because it's yeah. like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> and imagining, like, that's the thing. They would never be able to do that over in uh, Korea. Like, having a, let's say, a guy from a boy group reading off mean tweets, uh, you know, uh, on, like, a show. Like, it just would not happen. Like, because they all, also, for one, they... The companies that they're a part of, they they never, I don't think they would ever want to look like they don't give a shit. Specifically, at least if we're talking about like the boy groups, uh, like the K-pop groups specifically, they never want them to look as if they don't give a shit. Because I'll be honest, I think a lot of them, truthfully, if it was not for like that little cultural, like, um, like... If it was not for the culture itself over there, a lot of these celebrities truly would not give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, they would, like, not even be covert about it. They would just yeah. straight up say, I would not give a fuck. But the cultural expectation is, is that, like, you know, you have to care because these are your fans and all of that, right? Yeah. And to a certain extent, I do understand that they are your fans. Like, you know, you should respect them and such. But when it comes to my own fucking personal life, fuck you. <laughs> if yeah. I was them, like, you know, if it's to my own personal life, like, go fuck yourself, truthfully. And I'll be honest, I don't really listen to enough K-pop uh, to really, like, know the ins and outs of, like, that industry. Like, but I know people like my sister... She does know the ins and outs of that industry. Not like that if she was a part of it or whatever, but like, you know, from anyone being a fan, they kind of know it. And like, there's been plenty of um, articles out there in the world, uh, or in the world, in the past like couple of years where they've talk about, they've talked about like how like K-pop fans like being literally led into like kind of into depression and such. And like, and not to mention even like the multitude of suicides that have been of people within the k-pop industry like a lot of fucking suicides and like you would think like oh you know they're stars like you know i mean not that like okay and then i'm saying that like stars are also not prone to you know suicide like kurt cobain and a few others we know it around here we know it in the states but at least the reasons for suicide in asia i think is just is a very much a different sort of thing compared to the states because at the very least their suicide is generally driven by outside forces not so much let's say like heavy drug use that you know we've seen here in the states or you know among other shit of course depression's always been a part of it around like in in the hollywood and such but at least for in asia it's because of that relationship that a lot of them really, really kind of feel as if they're very much alone when they're feeling like that. Because the whole, a lot of times, you know, the whole, at least if you ever talk to a, another Korean and like, they'll tell you that a lot of times, like they get told that, you know, just, just get over it. The whole expectation is, is if you feel like that, yeah, get over it. Be strong, you know? Like, just continue forward and such like that, right? Yeah. And to a certain extent, like, I do, ki- I do, like, not, like, subscribe to that wholly, but I do feel like, okay, like, if shit does get bad, you have to move forward. But when it comes to, let's say, now that you have a chemical imbalance, that's another thing entirely. And, you know, if it comes to that, then you need, like, professional help. You need a therapist, at the very least to talk to about these things and you know people say like oh japan's got like the declining birth rate and high suicide rate and such 
Like, it's the same I really do feel over there as it is to Korea. It's the same thing. Like, it's just because that, like, there isn't enough, like, sort of, um... I think there's awareness because how can you not be aware when people when you literally see people jumping off a fucking building like in the morning <laughs> like how do you not like how are you not aware but it's like the attitude towards a lot of that at least in uh South Korea specifically is very much like I think they're taking it seriously a bit more now but it's very much like still at a very slow pace over there. Yeah, that's that's kind of like a Zoomer thing, don't you know? Like when they're younger mm. and like the young people are starting to take that kind of stuff more seriously because of social media and the talks we've had. But mm. I feel like Korea, from what you're describing me, is like one of those countries where like that wouldn't have never even really happened if the young generation had not become as interconnected as they are because of things like social media. Because mm -hmm. from what you're telling me, it seems like they believe these feelings of despair, like the dopamine imbalances or chemical imbalances in your brain mm -hmm. when you need actual clinical help, is irrational. We are yeah, above that. Mm -hmm. we, we need to keep moving forward. Yeah. But we won't tell you why. Or in, even in America, what it is that you're feeling. <laughs> they'll analyze it, tell you why, get to the root cause of these kinds of things. Like you mentioned Kurt Cobain, the lead singer, mm -hmm. and also the lead singer of a fucking... Lincoln Park, he offed himself oh, a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, they're him too. And like you mentioned, that comes from like places of personal despair. Whereas in Korea, I'm not saying it's entirely because of the parasocial, but it also has to do with like the cultural aspect of it, which yeah. is so ironic that they feel so alone when these things happen to these like people and these pseudo celebrities that they love so much because mm -hmm. they got high suicide rates. Like they're not the only ones that they're happening to. Mm -hmm. Is a sheer, there's kind of an irony in that where like it's literal statistical data proving yeah. that you are not alone in this thought if you want to go the rational route with it instead of just being like oh man up or woman up or whatever mm -hmm. blah 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 <laughs> no there is literal <laughs> evidence proving mm -hmm. that you're not the only one we're going by the science here not by just like telling you hopeful things or like just mm -hmm. trying to cheer you up this is you're not alone here yeah so it's interesting to see that sort of cultural difference about it where it's like in a same sort of this is what i'm saying when like i'm saying like japan mm -hmm. is sort of like a more like amped up version of yeah. the late capitalist America because they also believe like we're told by our therapist you're above that you can rise above that and mm -hmm. they'll teach you how to do that Japan will tell you you are above that you can rise above that but just fuck off with it like we're not gonna like you're not we're not gonna help you with it or we're like not gonna we're not gonna acknowledge it. it like you're just stronger you're just stronger than this and if you don't realize that well then fuck you I guess the, let me also say something too because like a lot of times uh you know, when, let's say, at a university or at a company, you hear that, like, let's say, uh, oh, a fellow co-worker, let's say, had offed himself, like, God forbid, right? And, like, he committed suicide. There's, like, this whole thing, like, there's a newsletter or whatever, like, people saying, like, oh, like, you know, he passed away, and, like, you know, if anyone can, like, you know, I don't know, write a card or some shit, like, around here, like, they would just, like, they would do something, right? It's very much pageantry at that point, but it's, like, at least it's something, right? Mm-hmm. Over in Asia, I don't know how it is over there, because, like, people be throwing themselves into the subway, jumping off buildings, jumping off bridges, and, like, you know, just the whole, like, nine yards and such. Is but, it like, insane? <sighs> but, like, what I'm about to say is, is that, like, the way over there, right? Like, I'm not sure because, like, I've never really looked into it too much and never felt as if I had to. But now I'm thinking about it. I'm just kind of like, how do they take, like, hearing the news of, let's say, a someone they know in a worker, in, like, a work sort of environment? How do they take the news of, like, oh, like, a coworker committing suicide? Because it's like, I'm not going to hear, I'm not going to sit here and say or even insinuate that, like, oh, Japan and Korea is so desensitized to the fact that like so many people end up killing themselves. But I do think that it's become such a problem, right? And it's like, it's shit that we meme on sometimes too, which is unfortunate. But like, it really is like something that people attach to when they think of Korea and even Japan. Like not putting them to like... I'm I'm keeping them ex mutually exclusive, but like, you know, for, in their cases, like in at least in those two, we know we've heard 
even people from the West know that like Korea and Japan are prone to high suicides. And it's usually among the young people. And, you know, damn, I was about to just talk about my vacation and shit, but like, oh, no, here we we'll, are, we'll, like, going we'll, into this. We'll move on from this yeah. in a bit. I'll start yeah. asking you about the logistics yeah. of why you were there. Yeah. But I think, like, a big part of it, Dennis, I think the humanistic, like, nature of wanting to be there for our fellow man and wanting to make sure people are okay is kind of clashing with a late-stage version of, like, their inerrant, like, workaholic culture. Mm -hmm. think back like however many years ago you off yourself like that's just another cog in the machine gone that's what like the, yeah. some of the people at the top would see that as they ritualistically killed themselves like during World. i'm talking about japan they, they yeah. ritualistically like would commit harakiri during world war during world war ii when the mm -hmm. bombs dropped they saw that shit coming they're like oh fuck that and then uh they <laughs> said, which I, that I don't blame them for <laughs> that's a little different but point is i feel like you know that sort of like pseudo capitalistic nature is kind of clashing with like they're just you know, the innate, you know, socio, like, human nature to want to be there for one another. And I mm -hmm. think with the younger generation being more interconnected than they've ever been and being more, for lack of a better term, woke to these kinds of things, especially, mm -hmm. you know, with, like, their, um, with, um, their age and their culture, I think their suicide rates are increasing because they're kind of intrinsically or spiritually rebelling against that culture a little bit because mm -hmm. the younger generations are just kind of tired of that. You know yeah. what I mean? In America, like, it's a little like that, but not really. Like, we still value, like, our thoughts and our feelings and our humanistic nature above a lot of things. Like we said, therapists will tell you, like, why you're struggling or try to find out why you're struggling instead of just being like, you're stronger than this, be better than it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's still a little bit of, like, that late-stage, like, pseudo-hyper-capitalism, like... And I, I don't know if they're, like, they admit it or not or how aware they are of it, where it's just like, yeah, you kill yourself, like, you're a cog in the machine gone. This is mm -hmm. not the Asian way. This is not the Japanese way. We keep moving forward. We need to be unified and be stronger than this instead of getting to the root cause of what helps us need to be stronger than that. So I don't know if that's mm -hmm. going to create a cultural shift at some point. Probably not, knowing like how like, those think, countries are and how long they've been. It, but that's what I think, I think it, it is. I feel like it's too, mm -hmm. like, I feel like it's like, in a way, kind of like the youth pseudo-rebelling against, like, you know, the the ancient or like typical ways of like the, those Asian just the, cultures. Just and the, uh, yeah, the in place culture that's been like, there for so many they years. Have like such a respect for it still. Like they're still raised to respect their elders and whatnot. That's the biggest thing or like mm -hmm. one of the biggest things there. But at the same time, it's like there's some points in their lives where they're just not always treated like humans. And I think their brain yeah. recognizes that, you know what I mean? But like they're raised to see that as not valued still. Mm hmm. And they're just seeing it as not valued instead of like seeing it as I'm weaker and I'm not, I'm not helping the common cause because as time um, has yeah, moved on, yeah. things have become a little more individualistic in that way and people are unique and people are different and whatnot. And I think the culture just still doesn't completely reflect that ideology yet. I think that, that maybe that's what it is. I feel, I feel like it's like, like a little youth, like clashing with the old ways. And that's why, like, a lot of their suicide rates are as high as they are. Unless they're, unless I'm talking out of my ass and, like, a lot of, like, the suicides are from, like, middle-aged or, like, some older people or whatnot who are just treated like shit at work or something or mm -hmm. who can't stand it anymore. I could be completely wrong and just talking out of my ass about this. But from what you're telling me, that is how it seems to be. Because I'm thinking of, like, a lot of other countries and whatnot and their suicide rates are not nearly as high. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, the culture is just very, the culture is very different there. So, who knows? Because... Yeah. The thing is, is that at least in the case of Korea and Japan, specifically just them, um, and I guess most a lot of a lot of other countries, um, where it's very much like a Confucianistic sort of society, the whole main mo for a Confucianistic society is that you're benefiting not yourself, but you're benefiting the group. How is your actions going to affect the group? And the group being could be your family your team at work like you know you're the team you work with the company itself and all of that like how will it reflect on that and everything and they it's, see that as more morally wrong than or they see that as like a more morally wrong thing letting us all down as opposed to just building you worrying back about up, yourself building yeah, you back being, up to help us all move being on. Yeah. selfish is looked down upon hard in uh yeah. in east asian societies like just yourself fuck yourself think about us like think about the rest of us here and everything and to a certain degree like if it wasn't at such an extreme level that it is 
I would agree with it. Because, like, you know, I think to a certain extent, you do have to look out for everyone else. Not, like, to a crazy extent, but at least, like, you know, just kind of at least take a second thought about how these actions are going to reflect on everyone else, right? Yeah. But, and I think that's healthy, honestly. I think that is healthy, like, to that certain extent, like, kind of just, like, thinking about it at first. It's like, okay, you know, like, if I do this, then it's going to reflect badly on, like, my team, on my family. Like, it's going to just look bad in general. But, why but you take it too far to the point. But that's where you're what like I mean. Collecting. Like th th that's why I always said there's always levels to this shit. And for a lot of East Asian countries, if we're talking at least Korea and Japan, they take it to an extreme because that's like that's how they've been even from like decades before. They were coming from off of let's say for Korea the Korean War, plus for Japan World War II in general and the devastation that that had. They lived uh, during those times a very sort of like, it was a very hard time, and it was, like, around the time when, like, the economy was so bad that, like, every grain of rice even, like, mattered. Like, you did not waste food, period. <clears throat> and, you know, at the very least, when it came to, like, fathers going to work, like, I have to work. Like, I have to make sure, like, my family is, like, taken care of because they're living in a really shitty time right now where... Jobs especially wasn't really like that, uh, that, let's say, um, I guess there wasn't that many jobs around, like, wherever they were living. And it really wasn't until for a lot of those countries, uh, for at least Korea and Japan, say a lot of those countries, but, like, for Korea, it wasn't until around past the uh, 70s going into the 80s that they really started to kind of, like, at least South Korea specifically, they really started to, like, kind of improve their fortunes and the economy, like, shot the fuck up, like, thing by around, like, 1980. A lot of those East Asian cultures, man, like, I think of, like, you know, the kind of slurs that Americans were still saying about Japanese people mm -hmm. in the 50s post-World War II, yeah. 80, and then the 80s roll around. Japs! <laughs> and then the 80s roll around, and they gave us this Italian man that took over the world. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, you know, when you think about yeah. it that way. Like, speaking, speaking of Italians, it makes me mm. think of, like, Tony and Christopher, if that makes any mm. sense. It made it how he saw his depression as an obstacle. Like, a mo like mm -hmm. that's a way more extreme version, because, you know, he was, like, a mobster and whatnot, but... Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Italy's kind of close to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, at least, again, in, um... I think the way that mental health in general... I guess we didn't really refer to that, like, the whole time, but the way mental health is kind of, like, uh... I guess portrayed, like, in, um... In, in East Asia, like, specifically Korea and Japan, like... I think very much for the young people, they do feel it. And I think for, like, coming into the later years, let's say down the line in the future, I think truthfully, it will be taken more seriously. It's just that the main obstacle is not even people. It's more so like the system itself. Like, it's... Like, I think everyone, you know... Like, if their parent, like, know, like, knew, like, that their kid, like, you know, uh, committed suicide. And, like, they have to live with that and such, right? And there was actually a, uh, there was a movie that my girlfriend was watching that actually talked about this, where, um, in Korea specifically, uh, it was, like, this girl who was at a call center, and they were, uh, basically working as teams, right? And she was part of this team. And they were basically all trying to hit these metrics so, like, you know, they could, like, and they were supposed to be bonuses that they got, like, if you hit those metrics and, like, we'll get, we'll, like, you know, shell those bonuses out to you. And they're, you know, obviously everyone kind of knows of, like, the Korean and even Japanese work culture where, like, you're staying after hours to work and you're mm -hmm. not getting paid for those hours either. Like, this is because, like, you know, you should be grateful for the comp like grateful to the company like that you even have a job and such like fuck your personal life essentially yeah. and you know in their case like this girl like she was working like back and forth and back and forth on and on and on and on and on thinking like okay like, i'm gonna make some good money i'm gonna get these bonuses she ended up not getting them and she basically flipped the fuck out attacked her boss because the boss basically like was very dismissive of her entirely just kind of like you know, is like you should be happy that like you know you got those numbers even to begin with. Like that was like the sort of expectation, and um, she essentially just felt, I think, very alone 
in that uh in that moment and there was a scene where she drinks like a motherfucker she drinks so much she ends up killing herself um she drowns herself in a lake and then there is this investigator who then goes into the case and she like investigates the whole circumstances of like the of the suicide and such and she realizes that this is not even like just a company problem that like they were pushing her way too hard um to meet those metrics and stuff it wasn't even that it was very much the movie said a a countrywide problem this is something that is very just intrinsic to our like culture and because she goes not only to the company, she goes to the fucking labor department as well and complaining or like not really complaining, but like she literally rips them apart and says, how can you push these fucking young kids? Because she was a kid. She was not even like a, a college student. They, like, How could you push these poor kids to like work in these fucking conditions? And like and she notices there is like a very like just apathetic attitude to like her passing and even just like this whole problem in general and i think one of the ladies at the labor department basically argues that you know what can we do though because we have no power here some fucking clerk at a labor department that has no actual power to change anything and the message of the movie essentially was was that this whole thing has to change from the top down like, there's got to be, I think, essentially, they're uh, not exactly saying this, but I believe that they're kind of saying that there has to be a president eventually who addresses this because this is like, it's fucking, it's insane. Like, I, I think the movie, maybe some would argue like, okay, this is like a very extreme case, but I also like to think probably not really either because they put these kids to work early and I'm not against putting kids to work, really. But it's more so like the conditions they work in have to be good, first of all. Mm. And like the very fact that this kid was literally in the movie. In the movie, guys, mind you, this is just a movie. The very fact that the kid was working even after hours as well. Like, and the expectation is that you have to work after hours. Like, what? (laughs) Do you think... What world leader would address that? If it wouldn't be a world, it, it would not be a world leader. It has to be a Korean president. Oh, you mean like yeah. a president of a company? No, like I think the uh, like an actual like their president. Oh, so yes, like the country president. Okay, that's yeah, like for the country for the country. Yeah, okay, like, I was going to say because that would be an insanely progressive president because that would yeah. be one who is intrinsically admitting there we got is a, a flaw in our culture. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there are that be guy people would get who shot. Would, yeah. He would get are, shot. <laughs> there are people who would love him for that. And there are people who would want his head on a pike. Yeah. Probably. Like, especially the way even Korea's, um, because you know, like how we have like our robber barons over here, like just uh-huh. 0.01% rich. Chebos are the like top four big mega companies that like basically rule the, rule See, the country. That's what Parasite like, is about. Cause my parents hate that movie because like there's, it's just like, oh, there's a really violent scene and whatnot. And it's like, mm-hmm. dude, that movie got best picture for a fucking reason, dude. Mm-hmm. Like it got best picture for a fucking reason. It goes to show how climate change was affecting that company. How more than anything, the wealth gap in that country is well, kind of similar to here. Probably not as bad as America, if I if I gotta keep it a buck, or maybe that's just because there's more wealthy, like triple billionaire Americans. Who knows? But uh, also that too. You like you see how like the struggles of it was about the struggles of that country, and that's mm-hmm. why I hate whenever my parents bring that movie and they bring it up a lot. How much they bring up, how much they dislike that movie. I'm like, holy shit! Like y'all just did not get it, and it made me sad that they yeah. didn't get it in that way, you know. And hopefully, hopefully one thing. You know, the the youth are powerful, man. Like, the young people will know more than we'll ever know. I so, think... I, I even I, think to... It's gonna take something, man, but I'm not exactly sure what, but change happens, change is possible. I mean, again, look at Japan. You know, that country got nuked, and 40 years later... The only twice. country that's ever been nuked, two nuked <laughs> twice, and 40 years later, they created the Mickey Mouse of gaming and created one of the big, literally unstoppable three companies in Japan... I forget what the other ones were. I think one of them was Toyota. One of them was Toyota, and then the other one was like some like 
investment type company. I forget what it is. Like, it's three mm -hmm. companies that pretty much are guaranteed to be safe or, like, even assisted, bailed out by the Japanese yeah. government in case anything ever happened to them. One of them is Nintendo. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. and, Just too uh, big to fail, essentially. Yeah. Like, essentially, yeah. Yeah. So, the youth are powerful. If there's anyone that can eventually make that change happen, it could be them. But I really do think it's a bit of, like, a youth versus culture clash. And yep. I think Japan can keep that, uh, J Japan and Korea can keep that unified nature of, like, look at the amazing things we can do together if we work hard and whatnot. But, like, there's more to life than that. that all, but that's all, wor the thing. all work and no play makes you a dull, dull boy. And, a uh, lot of times, their whole narrative is, is that we broke our backs, sweat, and blood to get where we are now. And to a certain extent, I think, at least to where they were at, before they became, like, let's say the giants that they are now, they kind of had to. I will admit that. But now in a sort of postmodern society, or like, oh, not postmodern, but I guess like in a modern society, in like by today's standards, comparing it, let's say, even to like the United States, I think the worker culture even here is kind of, it's not the worst, but it, like, it's, it's very much anti, I think every country is very much like anti-worker. That's the thing. It's like getting it's, worse here because a lot of places are short staffed and wages have not increased with inflation and there is yeah. no law forcing these corporations to do that, which is why it's getting a lot worse here. They expect more out of you here for less now. And it's getting yep. worse. I visit a lot of stores on my job. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking ambassador for Nintendo, so like I visit mm -hmm. a lot of stores doing my thing. First store I ever visited, and uh, there's so many there's so many less of them there, and a lot of them are just there for longer. That end, but apparently no one wants to work. That's what the that's the bullshit they preach us. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh-huh. <laughs> late late stage capitalism, my friend, is there's one thing that we have in common with our Asian brothers to the east. It's uh it's Mega gotta, Corps it's, are always gonna kill are always gonna like basically fuck you in the ass, basically. We like, need a global Roosevelt. We need a global oh, no. trust buster. We need a global Okay, we need a global Roosevelt who's not an idiot who fucking walks out and gets himself killed. Like, like uh, we've had too many, I think, like, great men, even women. We've had a lot of great men and women who, like, ended up, like, who had, like, great aspirations that was going to benefit the world, let's say. But they ended up getting killed. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 we need a guy who's not fucking dumb enough to get himself killed. Well, you know that like, George Carlin quote, you know, like, all these peacekeepers and, like, people that yeah. come around, you know, like, John, uh, John, Len John Lennon, Jesus, Martin Luther King, he said, maybe we're not ready for that yet. No, Shit. I think... I don't even think it's not that we're not ready. I honestly truly really just kind of stem from the fact that, like, a lot of them have this belief that, like... Because at least in Martin Luther King's case, I know a lot of people may disagree, right? But, like, you know, he very much, like, did show himself in public a lot. And it made him a target very easily. And, like, the very fact even before him, Kennedy got fucking killed. Like... And, like, you know, that was just off of negligence. Because at that point, like, they did... They, they like... I don't know, people thought like, oh, Lincoln was the only president that was ever going to be killed. Sure, yeah, when you're in an open car. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no one's ever going to fucking shoot you. Yeah. Like, it, it was just wild to me. Like, now it's like, not that I'm saying like, okay, killing a president is like so much more harder than it was before. But at the very least, it's like, you know, there is a lot more precautions that like they take now to prevent that than they did before. The way Lincoln got offed was like some guy made a fucking shotgun at home in Japan, and uh, I know, yeah, he off, and then he Abe. offed the prime minister. <laughs> and, and, Abe. Apparently, that was like cult shit or something about like some cult that they were both in. There's a conspiracy about that. Who, who the? Fuck I mean, knows? either way, though, he killed the president. Yeah, in I mean, Japan. he killed like a prime minister. Yeah, yeah. like he killed the leader of the country, right. and like I think well, a lot. I mean, but okay, when I'm okay, let me just uh, say this last thing and then we'll just wrap it up here because it's getting okay. too long and you have to go to work. Oh, but, man, I, um, I, I, that sucks. I wanted to ask you, like, I feel like we were talking hmm. about a lot okay, of negatives. Ask, ask, go ahead. Ask your no, just, we, were, we were just talking about a lot of negatives. Yeah, yeah. And so I just, I wanted to at least maybe either end or like I would just re Okay, we can this. end with the positives. Because I, I, I didn't, I didn't even ask you about your trip. <laughs> we, we, we really wound up getting real, and that's fine. We really wound up we're going real gung ho on culture here, which mm. I think is good and is healthy, but at the same time, I don't know. I also kind of wanted to ask you about the stuff you did. You know what? Fuck it. Like, what good, what things did you do on your trip? And what, like, positive things would you say about Korea culturally as opposed I, to, as opposed to America? I think Korea actually loves people. 
I think they really do like foreigners if you're well for one if you're polite like I think it really um people kind of tend to think that like all Koreans like don't like strangers flat out but it's more so kind of like it's very dependent on what energy you have when you go up to them to like ask a question or something or whatever like oh like where do I go from here and like whatever like that and like they and I've noticed this even with me Koreans really love to talk. If you act, like if you like get them into like a conversation, like you know they can go on for fucking, I I think hours just talking about like anything or whatever like that they're into that you're into whatever like you know, it's like we for the most part I think we've kind of perfected it where we look like we do not want to talk to anybody flat out. But the moment you come up to us with like the correct energy and like, you know, we like you'll figure like they'll figure out real quick. It's like, oh, shit. Like, no, like this guy's got like a lot to say or at the very least, like, you know, he's like the energy that like, you know, he was showing before was not what, you know, he's showing now. It's completely different. And I think like people kind of like to think that Koreans are very like stoic and just very 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 serious people when in reality it's just like we're, we're going through the same shit that you are like at least when it comes to life you know like i think the our outlook towards it is maybe a little bit not more grim let's say but like we kind of we do kind of deal with it you know in our own way i suppose and we just kind of have that look that comes with that but a lot of times, like, you know, you'll figure out that, like, you know, if you ever got, if you guys ever go to Korea and such, and if you even have, like, Korean friends and seen their parents and stuff, we're very warm people. It's just, I, we, we just kind of, at first, are, we have, like, a resting bitch face much of the time anyway. <laughs> so, like, when people look at us, they just think, like, we hate life and hate everybody. But, like, because, like, we just have, like, this very, like, one line face. If you ever went down to, let's say, like Palisades Park and like saw like just regular Korean, like, you know, uh, adults walking around, they all kind of have the same like face by default. It's not until like obviously like they meet a friend or they're talking to people that like you see like that, you know, they're very talkative people. Yeah. Like it's just that we're not like that by default. It just depends on like who we're talking to. And um, we're. And, like, Koreans, especially when it comes to even, like, serving food and such. Like, if you've ever gone to, let's say, uh, Korea and you've ever been to, like, a a mom and pop sort of restaurant. They're very generous with their uh, servings. They want you to fucking eat. And uh, also another thing, if you're going to Korea and you're going with USD, you're going to be a king. Honestly, you're you're a king over there. Like shit is so fucking cheap. Just like the conversion rate uh, between yeah. the won and the dollar, dollar is so strong over there. And like, you know, you could, like, you know how like okay, if you go to the mall, like a GSP, buying a couple clothes could set you like a couple <laughs> bucks back, like a lot, right? Yeah. You go to Korea, you go to the mall, you could buy like triple of whatever the fuck you could buy over there, uh, over in the states, and it would be like practically the same amount. Same thing as going to Mexico to get your teeth fixed. What's that, 60 or like, bucks? Going to Colombia to get your uh, Brazilian butt lift. Like, same shit, really. Like, um, I think that another thing... procedure's actually a lot more dangerous than you'd think, by the way. I mean, yeah. Like, of course. Yeah. But, uh, but what anyway, I'll, continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I think, I guess, in Japan, one thing <laughs> that I did realize over there, just like as a... I guess as a positive, I suppose it is, um... They're very, like, inclined, like, service industry culture-wise, they're very inclined to be as warm as possible to you, right off the bat. Like, they'll welcome you when you come in, like, it's actually my style and everything, and, like, you know, they'll just go out of their way to, like, sort of, uh, like, making sure that you're taken care of and stuff. Like, it's almost like it's, there's, like, a guidebook or a guidelines that were written for them that, like, this is, like, how we do things, service industry-wise. And for a lot of times when I went to Korea, serve, like, you know, ordering food and such, just, <laughs> there was really no, like, crazy warmth from them or anything. It was very much the same energy of, like, what do you want? 
<laughs> <laughs> Which you know, how do, I do, how do I voice Asian Squidward? How do I how do I do that? How do I like you, we were talking about that earlier? Like I'm talking about fucking. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? It sounded it's like, it sounded like Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> like I think um, I think oh. one time my mom said it the best, where uh, Japanese people can put on two faces better than Koreans. Like they can put on the whole like you know. Hello, how are you? Sort of face. For Koreans, we just kind of go, "What do you want?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. Which you know, again, I I don't fault them for. It's just the way they are. I've even had times like that where um, I didn't work at a restaurant or whatever, but like I worked in the retail enough where I just kind of was like, "Hello, bye. Here's your change. Fuck you," and like you know, just next person, you know, and everything. But yeah, like, and I think. One thing, the nature in Korea is unmatched. I was going to ask you about that. Like, yeah. how were the, I was going to ask you, like, not only where did you go, but like, how were the sites, mm. like, visually, like, how is, how is that country? Because I feel like people picture mm. certain things about a country. Like, I had a Russian mm. friend who was like, oh, like, she thinks it's like freezing everywhere or whatever. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not like that everywhere at all. I mean, there's places mm. that have like beautiful parks, beautiful cities and whatnot. Mm. Really makes you think of like how much is similar and how much is different, like, between our, our mm. countries if maybe we're just way more different by culture rather than by uh um what's the word i'm looking for here by uh infrastructure mm. and uh where i stayed at uh to answer your question um was puzan and puzan is the southern uh is like the most southern city uh down in korea and i think it's the second largest um in the country at least even based off importance very important port city very also big international um presence there too and uh most of the time when people go to Korea, they think, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Seoul. And, like, you know, that's where I'm just going to be at for the most part. But um, in me and my girlfriend's case, we uh, we went to Seoul last time we went. So we decided, okay, let's go to Busan and, like, see how it is over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one, a couple things. Um, compared to Seoul, which is, like, their mega city, Busan was very much a quieter sort of neighborhood. It had its nightlife, you know, as all cities do, but there were a lot of times where, um, when I compared it to Seoul, it was just leagues quieter compared to over there. And it, uh, another thing was, was that, uh, it had the beach. It had like a coast for people to just go on to and like set up their mats and just kind of. Lovely. Sit down and just hear the waves crash. And I love that. I preferred that far more than I did over in Seoul because Seoul had its own body of water. It's called the Han River that cuts through like the city. And there's major park areas that like go along uh, that river uh, in the city. But nothing beats hearing an ocean's waves crash on the fucking uh, on the shore and just like enjoying a beer and having snacks and just. It was like, it, you just could not beat it, in my opinion. And the city is very much um, still developing. There's big ass like fucking uh, condos that are being built, like even now, uh, when I was like, you know, when I was over there. And the, uh, they also have their own accent too. I don't like for any like of the maybe two Koreans that like are watching this. If you've ever heard like that uh, Busan, like sort of Southern accent, like you'll know what I mean. And the taxi driver that we had once, um, he actually spoke to us, like, he had a full-on conversation with us. And, like, and he spoke better Korean than I did, by far. But, like, even in my head, I was, like, I grew up with a very much a soul as sort of accent. And when I heard this guy's accent and the way even he sort of, like, slurred some words and, like, even kind of, like, changed certain, like, letters or such, like... I don't know why, but like I was such a snob in my head. I was just like, why is he talking like that? <laughs> but like, but in reality, like, you know, this is like the accent that they grew up with and everything. And even like, um, we watched me and my girlfriend some movies where it took place in Puzan and like a lot of the characters in the movies, they spoke in that accent. So I was like, oh, okay. It's not like that unfamiliar to me, but hearing it in real life was just like crazy to me because like. Just, it's like the same when, like, people think, like, oh, when they think of English, right? It's like, hello, my name is David. I work at Target. Like, but, you know, but then you go down south and it's like, hey there, my name's David. I work at Target. Like, you know, it's like, just, yeah. 
You know, you don't ex- like. I think everyone kind of expects it, but like when they hear it, it's such a shock to them that like, I, I still rolled with it when he was talking with me, but like I was just like, damn, like. That accent's weird. Like, I'm, just, like, I'm no. just picturing like a Southern American accent, just like speaking Korean, like "bo dang, go down, yeah, yeah, yeah." But then like it's just more twangy somehow. Yeah, like it, it was just like that sort of way. But like the, I, I did say to my even my mom, um, that their Korean is far more softer and kinder sounding than let's say ours, like in Seoul, because like it's so much just like it's so cheery, the way they talk. And, like, compared to, let's say, like, Seoul, which is just, like, so, like, uh, like, this is just how it is and everything. It's just Maybe. definitely a bit more tougher in that respect. Maybe it's because they're chilling on the beach more often. Definitely. I honestly think it, that is. That is the case. Like, I noticed, too, most coastal cities, if they got a nice-ass fucking beach, shit is really laid back for them over there. Like, I'm talking just coastal cities across the board. Like, shit is just so laid back for them over there. Like, compared to, let's say, if you, like, lived in New York City, which, like, you know, it is, like, its own sort of culture, right? Yeah, hustle, but, like, hustle, yeah. Yeah, and, like, let's say you go to Miami. People, be, the people don't give a fuck in Miami. Like, that all. They would just be chilling out on the beach and, like, just relaxing. And, like, Pusan was very much the same way. Like, the young people, even the older people, everyone just, like... It was just, like, a thing that they did, like, just to set up the mats and go to the beach and just hear the waves crash, have your food there, have your beer there, and just relax. Like, really unmatched, think, in my opinion. Really makes you think about how similar we are at the end of the day, our similarities and our differences. I've never been to Miami, but, you know, I always sense that if I did, you know, I would get looked at a little weird. Why? Cause There's I probably like, weirder people than you in Miami. <laughs> no, 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 Dennis. I, I feel like they could probably sense me. Why? Because of how white you are? No, the opposite. Because <laughs> of the because of Cuban. Ah, I'm sorry, like, I'm you don't gotta tell them. I'm gonna be walking, and then they're just gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> "I smell a sandwich off of you." <laughs> oh yeah, Chico. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that? Dos I'll be like, uh. <laughs> see. <laughs> In the most oh, American oh, sea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Papa, mira. Mira, mira. Uh, uh, uh. Like, and, uh. He just like, gives I, you, like, a Cuba Libre. Like, he's like, oh, drink, 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 bro. Like, let's go home. <laughs> What's that, Blanco? Dos Cubano? Like, I feel like they'd be, yeah. like, looking at me and be like, you're white, but, like, Something off about you. Like I just feel like, <laughs> I feel like con- I feel like connected to you for some reason, and I don't like they're know looking at why. you, and like the Cuban flag start to slowly come into like slowly fading in behind you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about uh, top ten fun ways to kill yourself. Just go to Havana and yell "Viva Fidel" at the top of your lungs. <laughs> 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 You'll get insta shot, and you will deserve it. Well, um, this has been um, this has been a real nice one. Um, I guess I'll um I'm gonna save this spot for the intro. Uh, we hope we uh we hope you guys enjoyed. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. I don't. We got. We both have to go to work, don't we? Hmm. Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not too hard, as we've uh as yeah, we've discussed. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. I got a shower too and shit. We hope you guys um we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, you know this episode was all about Dennis. You know, let's let Dennis do the outro. I wish you could have made that a little more natural. <laughs> now I'm just kind of like, here's our plugs. <laughs> no, fuck segues. <laughs> we don't need that I, shit. I like segues. <laughs> Makes things easier. But all right. And speaking of um, and speaking of uh, the Asians, I think it's only appropriate <laughs> that we let the Asian half of DDE do the outro. Oh, you couldn't make oh, that any less segue. racist. Couldn't make that any less racist, like at all. <laughs> so, uh, as like a, a supporter of the Asian Pacific community, I would like to give our Asian Pacific Islander the chance to give uh, the the plugs for today. It's like the most virtue signaling shit in the <laughs> yeah, world. Oh, yeah. I would like to give this other half to our to, to the Latin X half of the Double D experience. Like, oh, die! Yeah, literally. <laughs> Die. I'm, I like, hate you. I'm like already cocking my shotgun to shoot you. Go to Miami and call the Cubans their Latinx. Oh, probably I dare you. They're probably <sighs> spitting your drink. 
Oh, I, oh, they're gonna do more than that. Uh, <laughs> kick you in the nuts. Kick you in the nuts. Making sure that none of your children say this dumb shit that you're saying. They'll give you a whole fucking bucket of Cuban coffee, which is like espresso-sized coffee, and if you drink all that, like, you'll... That's they'll a one-way trip to the ER. Yeah. Right, fine, I'll Kill fucking... You. I'll fucking do it, fine. <laughs> uh, DDE, outro, <laughs> plugs. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, <laughs> to title this DDE, outro, plugs. No, I'm not titling that. The title yeah, of this not... episode is going to be David Interviews Dennis About Korea. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, you can write Korea number one. <laughs> make that the title, please. Make that the title. Make that the title, David. Don't pussy out. It's a great title. Don't, don't lie to me. Don't don't lie me, to me and say you it's not. You told me I was being racist for fucking How like. How's that tell racist? It's no, true. No, 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 no. You told it's me. It's true. You told me I was being racist by letting the Asian half of DDE do the outro since we were talking about Korea. But then you want me to title it Korea number one. Yeah, like, no one does suicides like us. We're number one. Plugs. Good, here they are. Here they are. No, that, no, that was a good no. one though. That no, was a good plugs. one though. Here are the plugs. Here are the plugs. Oh, here are the plugs. Here are the plugs. You can't lie to me. That was a good one. Here are the plugs. Here are the plugs. Here are the plugs. Here are the plugs. Yeah, it was good. Uh, suicide's number one. <laughs> uh, if you want our podcast to get number one, you can uh, give us a quick <laughs> review on Spotify. Quick five star review. You can only do it on mobile, and it takes two clicks on your on your phone device or your mobile device or your iPad, whatever it is. You don't even have to write a review. You can't on Spotify. It's literally just by stars. So give us a quick five stars. Really helps with our search engine optimization a lot. Follow, uh, subscribe, and listen to us wherever you get your podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, or wherever you get them, or right here on YouTube.com slash Neptunus. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, let us know if you guys have any questions for Dennis about Korea and whatnot and about his trip to Japan. Uh, if there was anything that I didn't ask that you wanted me to ask. Um, it was very impromptu in the morning today. I didn't have any questions prepared to talk to him about Korea. Even though we both knew that's what we were going to talk about. That's kind of my yeah. fault. And um, we hope you guys enjoyed this one. We hope you guys give this one as much love as you've given the last couple. It's every the last, the last three episodes of DDE have been very different. So I'm anxious to see how they do and how the algorithm blesses or uh, curses us. Curses but, you know, us. <laughs> you, you guys... You know, you need a little culture from time to time. Especially after last week, we talked about orgies for like, what, 35 minutes? Like, come on. <laughs> the only, oh, yeah, only cultural thing about that episode was, I guess, French culture. Because that was a French orgy that, like, led to us talking about <laughs> orgies and shit. And they invented, you know, the threesome and shit. So, whatever. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed. I have to take a shit and we both have to go to work. Uh, Dennis, this, this, is, this is a nice one. You know, it's, every, nice it's, it's nice every now and again to just, you know, have, like, one friend interview another friend like that instead of always just having to be, oh, I don't know this person. Like, a new guest on the show. Like, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. interview them. It's like, no, like, I think the Game Grumps did that on a podcast once. Like, Aaron interviews Dan. And I'm like, you know, that, that that's cute. I like that. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, I actually, sure. I honestly kind of like that. I just wish I had more questions prepared for you, but I'm going to keep that in mind for next time, all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, uh, guys, this was, uh... This was our, um, this is my return episode. Uh, we're gonna go back to our regular scheduled programming. Um, I mean, we are, I know we haven't really deviated from that at all anyways, but like, yeah, you know, a little. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah, this was our episode today. Hope you all liked it. Uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to drop them down there. I'll actually, uh, this, for this one, I will actually respond if you have any questions. So, drop them if you got them. And, uh, you know, and I'll see you. Peace. Bye. I love you. Oh, what? A, wait, what are the toilets like in Korea? Are they any different? They have the bidets. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. They, uh. <laughs> Americans have such dirty asses because we don't have that shit, bro. It's so dumb. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, it would take such a long time for them to kind of get on board with it. Like, it's just, you know, water shooting in your ass. <laughs> Hey, man. If it gets my ass clean, and I don't have to, like, rub dry-ass paper around my cheeks. <laughs> we're really so primitive when it comes to that, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are, but, you know, Korea's primitive in other ways, too. They're yeah. still li living in the 16th century while they're in the 21st. <laughs> yeah. Right, this is make me have to shit even more. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.